Hello fellow artists, this is Linda Riddle and it's a good time for art. Today we'll be making art with hearts. This simple little shape can instantly evoke so many feelings from love to friendship to heartache to so much more. As artists, we can take this familiar image and use it as a starting point to explore all kinds of artistic techniques and to express all kinds of emotions. Let's meet a contemporary artist who for decades has done exactly that. Jim Dine is an American painter, printmaker, sculptor, poet, and performance artist. He was born in Ohio in 1935. Hearts have been a recurring theme in Jim Dine's work. He uses the heart as a template through which he can explore relationships of color, texture, and composition. In these paintings and prints, you can see how Dine has created a variety of moods and expressed different emotions by his choice of colors and how he applies them. The impact can range from lighthearted and happy to dramatic to dark and somber. Jim Dine's heart sculptures explore the heart motif in a three-dimensional way. The monumental size of some of these sculptures make them especially imposing. Sometimes, Dine includes tools and other everyday objects on the surface of his sculptures and paintings. His family owned a hardware store when he was a child, and tools are an important element in his work. Here is a heart sculpture he made entirely from tools. The heart sculptures by Jim Dine have inspired me to make some puffy hearts. I love using liquid watercolor to achieve this tie-dye effect. The materials you'll need for this are two giant coffee filters, some liquid watercolor. This is optional, but you can use bingo bottles to apply the liquid watercolor, or you can use a paintbrush. And it's useful to have some sort of tray to catch the extra paint that goes through. So I'll do a quick demo of this.
I noticed that Jim Dine often uses drippy paint on his hearts, and I'd like to give that a try. For this puffy heart, I'm starting with two sheets of butcher paper that I've sprayed with liquid watercolor. This gives me the drippy effect I'm looking for. When I cut out my two heart shapes, I want to make sure I include lots of drips on each one. Rather than stapling the edges of this puffy heart, I'm going to sew it together with yarn. I'll sandwich the hearts together and punch through them with a paper punch all around the edges. If you want, you could use a staple or two to hold the hearts together so the paper doesn't slip while you're punching. Now I'm going to take some yarn and start sewing around the heart. I like to wrap a little tape around the end of the yarn to make it easier to work with. Punch the yarn through the first hole and tie it off. Then just start sewing by looping around the outside of the heart and moving to the next hole. It might take a few stitches to get the hang of it. Leave a pocket for stuffing the heart and fill it with crumpled scrap paper. Once the heart gets full of stuffing, you might want to reinforce the pocket with a staple or two to make it easier to sew together. Tie some yarn to the top of the heart to hang it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I feel like I've just barely scratched the surface of different ways that we can use hearts in our artwork. So what I'm planning to do is to put some more ideas on my Instagram, along with a few other demos. So be sure and check that out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all for today, but remember, it's always a good time for art.